Prudential Halftime Report. Brought to you by the Prudential. Come to the companies of the Prudential and build your future on the rock. For 21 years, Bo Schembechler worked the sidelines with a purpose and determination that inspired his players, frustrated his opponents, and occasionally an official or two. He comes from an era when coaches were known by one name, Woody Bear and Bo. If we go out there with the same enthusiasm, the same drive as we have the previous eight games, we're going to win. We've got big goals. We've got big ideas. We've got to win this game, and there is no game on the remainder of our schedule more important than the one you're going down to the tunnel to play today. Now let's go! Let's go! Great to have you here. Thanks, Roger. It's nice to be here. How important was it for Michigan to get on the board first today against Notre Dame? In my judgment, very important because um, the one thing about playing Notre Dame, if they get on top of you quick, the first thing they're going to do is to possess the ball. You're not going to see it, and it's very difficult to get it back and score a lot. Now, the thing that I would worry about in this game now is with Notre Dame trailing, Lou Holtz will open up that offense, use everything that he's got, and he's got plenty of arsenal. So this game is, is certainly not in the bag for Notre Dame. Well, Michigan. right now it's 17-7 to at halftime in Ann Arbor. Let's check out some of the action. Defense big early on for the Wolverines. Lance Dotton intercepts Rick Meyer near midfield. Breaks a tackle, gets about seven or eight more yards, and the Michigan defense came up strong early on as we see Chris Hutchinson here sacking Meyer for an eight-yard loss and the maize and blue they were all over the field second quarter three nothing Michigan leads and this man Desmond Howard four touchdowns last week against Boston College watch the end around gives you a little juke move cuts it back to the middle 29 yards for the touchdown that capped an 82 yard drive 10 nothing Wolverines more good defense for Michigan Eric Anderson recovers the fumble by Tony Brooks and that was big and then Michigan. They made it 17 to nothing. Ricky Powers, the 16-yard run, good blocking up the middle, eludes a couple tacklers. That capped an 80-yard drive. And then finally, right before the half, Meyer to the big fullback, Bettis, two yards on a touchdown reception. And at halftime, it's 17 to 7. And Bo, the defense, and I know you're just chomping at the bit because you love good defense. That's what Michigan had in the first half. They played extremely well, Roger, up until that last drive. They let the draw play out on the first drive. They drove right down there scored. I'm sure that that rejuvenated the uh, Notre Dame team and they'll come out the second half. It's going to be a real battle the second half and I think there's going to be some scoring. I got to say for the former Michigan coach you've handled it very well. You've stayed very <laughs> calm during the first half. We'll check on it a little bit more. Run down some other scores for you right now at Oklahoma today. Bud Wilkinson, their great coach, was honored at halftime. North Texas was the team that came in. Oklahoma leads a 27-2. Mike Coates, uh, blocked punt and interception, set up a couple touchdowns in the first half. UCLA and Tennessee and the Volunteers always seem to play well after the UCLA game. The last two times they've played, they've gone on to win Southeastern Conference Championships. As you see Andy Kelly hitting Pickens, 34 yards for the touchdown. And then the blocked punt, Reggie Ingram recovers. That made it 14-3. And Tennessee goes on to beat UCLA 30-16 in the final. And, Bo, this is a quality opponent for Tennessee early in the year. This is a big win for them. Tennessee establishes themselves as one of the top teams in the country. I don't think there's any question about that. They've got the great quarterback. They've got Pickens, the great receiver. And uh, a win over UCLA of that magnitude, um, you could look for them to be right up there all year. Picking six receptions over 100 yards. Big game out at Folsom Field in Colorado. The Buffaloes looking for a new school record. 16 straight victories right there. Third quarter action. This is J.J. Joe, one of the great names in college football. 75 yards up top to Melvin Bonner. And that made it. Baylor 10, Colorado 7. Fourth quarter. Watch now. Ken Call. Hagen will pitch it back. This will cap an 80-yard drive with his 10-yard touchdown. And the Buffaloes, in the fourth quarter, they lead that 14-13. to Bo, these are two teams very similar. McCartney and Taft, they run a lot of the same offense. Is it tough to play a team like that that looks so much like you? Well, I think, uh, you know, in a way, it's, uh, it's uh, good to play a team that because uh, you know a lot about them. You're, you have a little better chance of defensing them. But the option play is still in football, as you saw in that picture. Bill McCartney's still using it. Grant Taft still uses it. And so those two teams are very, very solid teams. And that game is, uh, 
an exciting game. And we'll keep you updated on that on the Prudential Halftime Report. It is in the fourth quarter. Meanwhile, at Nebraska, the Huskers haven't punted this year. No, they haven't. They lead Colorado State 64-14. Meanwhile, Iowa State and Iowa, this is always a tough game. The Hawkeyes scored on their first three possessions. They win it. They beat the Cyclones 29-10. Georgia Tech and Boston College, BC with one of the toughest schedules this year. Sean Jones, a couple of rushing touchdowns, 30-14 the final there. Central Michigan and Michigan State, this is correct. Central Michigan beat Michigan State 20-3. Herb Deuteronomy, the coach for Central Michigan, got to be delighted with Doug Adler stopping Tico Duckett on a fourth and goal in the first quarter. Then in the second quarter, Billy Smith of the Chippewas goes 15 yards with 52 seconds left in the half. The drive was set up by a Spartan fumble. This made it 7-0. And Bo, can you believe it? Central Michigan beats Michigan State in East Lansing? I really shouldn't comment on this game, but I will. First of all, they probably shouldn't have played each other, and Michigan State wasn't ready for the game. Herb Duramity is one of the fine coaches in the Mid-American Conference. They've been an outstanding team. And can you imagine how excited they are in beating Michigan State? That's an unbelievable win. That's one in a lifetime. By the way, transfer quarterback Brett Johnson didn't play the second half for Michigan State. At Ohio State, the Buckeyes ran up over 100 yards in penalties, but they hold on to beat Louisville 23-15 in the final. And Curly Hallman played for Texas A&M. He coached there, but his guys played more like Moe and Larry today. 45-7 the finals. Greg Hill rushed for 212 yards and two touchdowns, and that is a freshman record for rushing in the NCAA. We're going to be back with more, but first, more scores from our ABC Sports Board.